you are about to die. You know, I right. think it's, it's kind of really what I feel like we should be feeling. I asked composers to rescore a scene from How to Train Your Dragon. Together with Josh from Film Score and more, we're going to give feedback on five of them chosen at random. And stick around for the end where we'll listen to John Powell's actual music for the scene. After pulling apart the rescores, you'll understand what makes his music work so well. First up, we have Vincenzo Santonicola. So my overall response to this is that it's too safe. You know, like we get this kind of comfortable. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm kind of like bobbing my head as it's going. You know, the rhythm is almost more suitable for like a training session or something. I agree. Rather than like, you are about to die. You know, I right. think it's, it's kind of really what I feel like we should be feeling. I think it gets the action going at the right point, but there's not enough urgency to it. I do think that there could be a lot more acknowledgement of the changes in the action. You know, there was kind of like a similar feel. These two worlds, these are two different spaces, and I'm not really feeling them as different spaces. They're being kind of treated as all one. That was a fairly common thing I noticed in a lot of these. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it felt like it was being treated as all one time and place, right? basically. Right. Which it is all one time, I, I suppose, but yeah, the different uh, places. Well, it's also, I guess it's not even just different location as much as it's different meaning to the shot. Like this is a, I have to go help hiccup is a different meaning than I have to survive. You know, what is the moment that we're trying to acknowledge here? The moment is like, let me go help him. Here, the moment is like, I have to save my son or it's just like panic or, you know, just the violence of it. And that was something right before we hit record, we were talking about that it's a very violent scene. I'm missing a feeling of violence, I think, overall. Me too. I did like the little scales there. These little runs? Yes, but I think even though I liked that, I think that could still, uh, still use some urgency and panic to it. I think in some ways, you should imagine that your orchestra, either they're there or they're at least kind of like responding to what's there. So they should feel as panicked as everyone else does. Like right now, the snare player feels a little bit like relaxed, you know, that he's just kind of hitting that right. snare, not like, wow, you know, this is the end of the world, you know, like yes. that level of intensity just has to come from everyone in the in the ensemble to sell it to us. If, if you know, if you expect us to feel that way, too. Next is music by Riccardo Marchesini.
think this one had the intensity was greater, which I think helped more. Yeah, I, I felt more of that dark violence a little more, you know, that it was things were le less pleasant for sure, which was, was, was good. In a good way. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. In, in a way that worked. I thought the drum, um, that choice worked pretty well for it. It added that intensity. Yeah, yeah. I think the drum was maybe one of the, the strongest parts for me, actually, that, that choice of the percussion down there. I thought there was a, a couple missed opportunities, even right in the beginning here, of things to acknowledge or cut. So I'm going to let it run and I'll just kind of explain where I mean. That's good, that run up with the, the shot. Yes. That on her, that's a moment of panic. Grabbing the axe is really important. The climb is really important. Like we just completely, we completely ignored the change from Astrid to Toothless. Like again, that thing of like the same location, like these are different locations and we haven't really acknowledged different characters or anything. Those seem like missed opportunities. Hit that, hit that, maybe can hit that, hit that. I picked up on that too, that when it got into this, that, this moment, yeah. the music keeps going on, carrying yeah. on the same idea from before with no real change to it. And you know, one of the best pieces of advice I ever saw for film scoring, which I think is especially true in animation, is that the music should fit the video like a glove, that they should feel, you, you like shouldn't even notice that they're two separate things, you know, that they just like exist together. And part of how you do that is just acknowledging all these moments, or at least not letting them kind of pass completely unnoticed, like this kind of passes. Right, I think it makes it easier to miss, too. Toothless struggling to get out, I, I don't really focus in on it at that mm, point because okay. there's no change in the music. The crazy thing is this is a 60 second clip and there are probably a hundred little things you need to hit to, <laughs> to, right. like, to really get it all. Which is part of why I chose this scene, you know, was because I knew that there was a lot of action and a lot of... Right. I did like the heroic change in the middle when Toothless was running through the forest. Yeah, I did catch that. But again, I think it should have changed a little more after that moment when we cut back into the arena. Yeah, let me play that. Here. Right. It's no longer about Toothless anymore, and now we're back to the fight. So Right, and she's about to do something heroic, but not yet. The shift to this, to the return of the violent music is, is um, a good 10 seconds too late. Next, we have Florian Piewald. my overall comment is that it's a nice piece for a different scene i agree <laughs> uh so hopefully that's not taken too harshly but i don't know if you could see i'm kind of was bopping my head the whole time um, yeah i can see <laughs> which there's i think this is a it's not the right time for that not the right time for that I, there's there's a quote that in my head i don't know if it's really from him or not but in my head is from harry gregson williams that if the audience is tapping their foot or Mike is bopping their head, then you blew it. Like you're dead. They should, especially in like an action scene like this. Like I'm feeling totally safe. Oh yeah, you know, like I'm kind of grooving along. Right. Um, which is great for again, I've said before, like a training scene maybe, or meet the villagers kind of thing or something. You know, like daily life kind of stuff. Not 
this dragon is about to burn you to a crisp kind of bop in our head kind of energy right <laughs> right i think my main note is it feels very minimal mm -hmm. there's very little orchestra it just feels distant from the action it does yeah uh i noticed there were acknowledgments of moments you know that that there were certain changes at certain cuts you know so there was there was an effort put into kind of making sure that this this was in sync i would say overall it's very low energy it feels like all the musicians are kind of holding i back. agree everybody's kind of like oh what's gonna happen there's a whisper to it almost especially here it's like, there is a little like ooh, what's gonna happen the first thing i noticed was tonally it just felt kind of mysterious mm -hmm. instead of fearful it does and it's, i think it's those really high violins and the voice for me the most significant change probably of the whole thing should be the moment when it goes wrong now i guess you have to kind of i don't know if you can get this out of context but i think you can that he seems pretty calm right here everything's okay until the and hammer shot. when the hammer comes down and the eyes go wide then Everything has turned upside down. It's not that right. everything went up from like a two to a three. Or a two to a five or so. It's like we went from a two to an 11, you know, it's just like exactly everything that you thought, like as an audience, we're like, wow, is this the moment? Is he going to like turn the, the Vikings to the good side or whatever? You know, like this is an important moment and he fails. It, it everything flips and all of a sudden this is a really bad situation that it wasn't a second ago uh so we right. really need to acknowledge like the story has just taken a major change our next submission is from brian evans Yeah, I, I feel like there was uh, some really successful hits throughout, you know, that really acknowledged the action and actual the shifts. I agree with that. It definitely felt much higher energy and keep coming back to greater intensity. Mm, but yeah. it, it felt like there was an orchestra there who was responding to the action. Right, right. There were moments of build up and tension and there were accented moments now now that we've kind of gotten over that hurdle of syncing with the action i feel like the next hurdle then would be probably the production and trying to bring the mock-up a little closer to realistic sounding and part of that i think would be more from things too so we could have a much bigger sound you know th there's certain instruments that are kind of still sitting on the thumbs like, I can't really hear the low strings. Like, they could be, you know, doing that ostinato on the bottom. The brass could be, like, huge chords, and the winds could be all up here. Like, there's room on top of the music that's already written to just beef it up. I am wondering, though, there's the buildup with Toothless trying to escape. I kind of got a sense of resolution there, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure... Like, it's, it's a good thing, obviously, that he's able to get out when it comes to the action there, but it kind of segments it in a way where there's build up and then it feels kind of satisfying in a way, but Hiccup's still running for his life 
Right. Yeah. I think that the intention here is suspense and, you know, is he going to get out? But it's not quite uh, uncertain or sickening enough. You know, if... It's less of a desperation and more like a did it. It is. Uh, more like a setup and payoff kind of thing that's more satisfying than it's meant to be here. Yeah, it almost makes this be like, that's the end. Bump, bump. Have a good night. You know, a little bit of yeah. like it's kind of over. Yeah, instead of like, whoa, this is really big and now we're going to be able to do the thing but we still haven't done the thing. To me, this transition was a little odd, actually, of kind of connecting the Astrid moment and the Toothless with the exact same. Uh, I noticed that too. This, that just kind of stays through. I think it starts a little too early there. It starts way too early, yeah. I, I think so, because it's like, is this suspense being held on her climbing out? No, it's supposed to be on him climbing up, so. Let's connect it to that. It just needs an extra beat or two there, I guess. Yeah, just a little bit more of the Astro music and then to come in on that. But yeah, I, I feel that too, that it's it's trying to be suspenseful, but it's not quite um, gripping me in such an uncertain way, I guess. But you're right, especially with the way it lands on the... So that's tough because you want to acknowledge we made it. I mean, one way I might do that uh, is land on a a one chord of a new key like modulate up so it's like yes we've hit a place of satisfaction but we're it's it's at a new level and now we're like gonna have to keep going with this new this new key that could we work reached. um might be one way that i would i would acknowledge that the next composer is eric galuzzo <laughs> I think this one is very successful at uh, hitting different action points. And the main thing I want from it is more intensity, which I think we've said maybe on all the other ones as well, right? Probably, but this I, is a dial up to 11 kind of scene. Right, yeah, so we need it. And I think it's, for me again, it's not necessarily to change any notes. It's more to give everything more. Like I hear timpani, but we are really missing those big drums. And like, I think the percussion could actually handle a lot of that for us here uh, with what's written to, to add this just like power that I I'm agree. Not, I'm not feeling. I yeah. felt like this one, again, it felt like a full orchestra, but at the same time, I felt like it's kind of quiet. It's kind of quiet, right. Yeah, I could hear, there were moments where I could like hear Everybody. We have those nice little brass. Bah, bah, but there's a certain emptiness in kind of some of the other spaces. I need more fullness and more and more. I think I'm more it would be the word I would use. I did think this moment here, when Toothless is off and, and flying, felt like a very how to train your dragon moment to me if that makes sense, right? With the, the choir there. That this is one of the few spots where we actually had some soaring in, yes. in the in the queue that um, I haven't really heard in the other submissions, actually. I'm not exactly sure how to describe that moment. It feels kind of heroic and desperate at the same time. And I think yeah. that combined with the storing element like you mentioned that works pretty well and there's some good things here where uh, 
that that five one two one two three one two one two that's kind of that thing about like you can't really tap your foot to five four terribly comfortably so it's very you know it's it's off kilter and and kind of right violent absolutely rhythm, which i think is good so so for me the giving it just this oh so much more power and so much more punch which again it's not just you know great samples can help you get there but you can do it with the writing too and and drums and more body and fullness in all the layers this is the such a huge moment in the movie that everyone as i think you've said everyone in the orchestra should be like participating in the in the panic at this moment right at full power pretty much full power yeah yeah that would be good how about we take a look at a submission from john powell see how he handled this we think he submitted early too his, his, his came out a couple years ago all right so this is that same scene with the original score and the sound muted So, I mean, that to me demonstrates so many of the things we've been talking about, especially the level of intensity. I mean, re even yes. right, right at the top, the rolling timpani and the brass, we've got the strings, like it's already huge, even at our, our lowest moment. I think it's, it's worth pointing out, you know, a lot of the submissions had a pretty steady rhythm i mean at some point where we were a little critical of saying like okay now i'm just kind of like bopping my head to this but you don't really get this here you know you, you there's not like a you can't just tell off the bat what the meter is They're like oh that's in four four like it's like there's these violent hits and some suspense you know so we're really left kind of right like on our own as far as like ah God, I'm being attacked by the brass on all sides. He does change time signature a few times in this sequence just to suit the action. So there's there's not that consistent tempo to it. It changes in response to whatever's happening. Right. And maybe there's a moment where a character feels like, okay, I have a plan, and then it fails. So the music changes there too. Instead of treating this like one minute long sequence, what John Powell did is he really wrote around 10 different sequences that are mm -hmm. short and that interlock with each other and that blend together. And that's how he treated all the individual moments. Yeah, that it's like in this moment, Toothless is panicking and trying to get out. And that's its own thing. You know? Right, and then right. it cuts back to the ring and that's right. a totally different idea. There's so many, so many different things to acknowledge. Yeah, I mean, for me, the biggest takeaway is just how massive it sounds. Like, I'm, I'm surprised even uh, going and looking at it and being like, "Wow, he threw everything." It's, this, it's know? big and violent and intense, and right. there's no, there's no breather to it. Mm -hmm. Because you shouldn't be breathing to it, you know, until the resolution beyond this point. You know, we're not we shouldn't be able to catch our breath, right? Um, it's all about the story. Thank you to Josh for joining me for this video. For an even deeper understanding of what makes the music for How to Train Your Dragon so good, you really need to check out his channel, starting with this video right here. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.